Okay, so we just saw how to do some very basic things as if a body was indoors. Now let's take it to the next stage. Let's take it a little bit further with a few more examples. All right, so all of those questions are just like this again. You figure out the degree day accumulated each day, and then you figure out when the eggs were laid. So we did it inside before, but now let's move outside. Okay, let's say we found a body outdoors instead of indoors. Now the temperature is gonna be changing each day, so this is when you need to actually have your daily temperatures, like I showed you uh, how to uh, figure out on that Excel sheet. Okay, so all those things happened. Let's go through it again though. Let's say I find eggs on March 27th. So remember, you've got, we're using Chrysomyia megacephala. Here we've got our same uh, exact calculations. I'm doing degree days now because my temperature data is in days. Okay, we've got the stages, degree days needed. So I've done my ranges here. Here's my ranges. I need 0 0.6.3 degree days for the eggs. That's first, second, third, pre-pupil and pupae. So we got all our information average temperature, the threshold, all that. Okay, so then let's go through what needs to happen. So if I find first instar on March 27th, I need, so if I find eggs on March 27th, I need a, a maximum 6.3. So those eggs had to have been laid on March 27th. So that's when the eggs were laid. Body was available for colonization then on March 27th. But what if I find first instar on March 27th? So in this case, I need 6.3 to 13.8 degree days. When does that happen? The minimum happens on March 27th. The maximum happens on March 27th. So again, my time of colonization estimation is March 27th. What happens if I find second instar maggots on March 27th? So we go to our second instar maggot. The range is 13.8 to 27.6. Okay. So 13.8, that happens on March 27th, but 27.6 does not. So we need to go to the day before. So now we have a little longer range, okay? So now the range is from March 26th to March 27th. This is saying that the body was available for colonization on either one of these two days, depending on where in that second instar this larvae is. But since we can't tell that, we have to give a range. Okay, so March 26th to March 27th. Now what if I find third instar maggots on March 27th? Okay. This range goes from 27.6 to 55.8 degree days. Okay. We reach 27.6 on March 26th, and we reach our 55.8, not on the 20th, but on the 24th there. Therefore, the eggs had to have been laid somewhere between March 24th and March 26th. Okay. Okay. What if I find pre-pupil maggots on March 27th? The ra that range goes from 55.8 to 78.3. We reach 55.8 on March 24th, and we reach 78.3 on March 22nd. Okay, so then our time of colonization estimation is March 22nd through March 24th. Okay, now, see how that works? It's just finding your range associated with your uh, data there. Now, what happens though if I find something on a different day. So let's say I give you all this data, you figure it all out, you know, I've given you data from March 27th to March 21st, but then I throw you a curveball. What happens if something happens on a different day? Let's say instead the maggots are found on March 25th. Okay, so now you have to get rid of these two days because the maggots didn't experience those two days, that was in their future. So you can do the exact same calculations, I just need to start on a different day. So what we do, is we ignore those days. So you just delete those out. And this is why I really like using Excel because you can just delete some things, you make one or two changes, and then all the calculations will automatically happen. So in this case, we just start again on March 25th. So average temperature between the two minus the threshold times a unit of time. We get 14.5 degree days accumulated on the 25th. Our accumulated degree days 14.5, we put them in the piggy bank. Day before 10, then we add them up. 14.5 plus 10 is 24. Then we add 15.5 for 40, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so instead of starting on March 27th, we get we can start on March 25th. So in this case, let's say I found, oh, second instar maggots on March 25th. 
when was that body available for colonization? So again, we're looking for somewhere between 13.8 and 27.6. 14.5 happened on March 25th, so they could have reached the very beginning of that second instar on the 25th, but they need more to reach the end of it. So, ooh, not even enough on the day before. We're looking for 27. There we are. So that body was available for colonization sometime between March 23rd and March 25th. Cool. All right. So let's put it all together into a mock case. So this is a mock case that you're going to find. And uh, these are the types of questions I'm going to be asking you. So read very carefully through the question first and foremost. Okay, here's my question. You find a body in a field on March 27th. What do you know immediately? One, it was outdoors. It was in a field. I've said that. Two, you know the date it was found. Great. So you already know a little bit of information. Since it was outside, you're going to be using uh, different temperature data from outside. You don't have a thermostat. Okay. Yeah, and you know the date when it was found. No apparent wounds were observed on the body. This is something that I give you simply to let you know that there are no wounds. This has nothing to do with your calculations. Maybe later on I could say, how do you, uh, the cops could ask something about that. But for the purposes of time of colonization calculations, this no apparent wounds thing doesn't make any difference. The body is covered with second instar maggots. Okay, good. So now we know what the uh, stage is. You identify those maggots as Chrysomia megacephala. Hey, now you have all the information you need. You What, what do you need? You, you need your, um, your species, Chrysomia megacephala. Check. So you can now look up the temperature data or the uh, life table data for Chrysomia, uh, Chrysomia megacephala. Okay, that will also give you your threshold for Chrysomia megacephala. This is something that you've been doing. Hopefully you've already filled out your um, table. So now you know how many degree days or degree hours are necessary to go through each one of those stages and you have your ranges calculated. Done. Okay, so you've got the temperatures, you've got that. The next thing you need it, then is your daily temperature. So you start out with your table here. So hopefully you already have this. We've done it a few times. Keep it. Never throw this stuff away. You know what temperature it's weird at. You know its threshold. You know how many, how many degree days and degree hours it takes to go through all its different stages. You figured out the ranges to the end of the egg, the, um, the range for the first instar, the second, the third, the, the, the pre-pupa, the pupae. So you have your information now. So you find a body, March 27th, no apparent wounds, body's covered in second instar maggots. So you're going to be looking, eggs first, for this range then. 13.8 to 27.6. See, since you, you've done it before, all you have to do is look up these numbers. You don't have to memorize anything. Just, yes, that's what I'm looking for. Check. So next, you have to pull the temperature data. What is the data that, or what is the uh, max and min temperature that happened during that time period? So that's something we've also been looking at. You met min and max. You've got your average temperature minus threshold times a unit at a time to give you your degree days. You have your accumulated degree days over here. Okay. So now all you have to do is answer the question, approximately how old are the maggots? Second instar, they are 13.8 to 27.6 degree days. When did we find that? March 27th, okay. And they reached their max the day before. So that body was available for colonization on March 26th to 27th, that's one to two days. So the maggots are approximately one to two days old. See how I made that leap? I know the dates that's so found here, one to two days old. So always answer the question. So if I ask you approximately how old the maggots are and you give me a date of March 27th, that's not answering the question. What if I ask you how old you are and you say I am June 13th? What? No, give me an H. Always answer the question. So if you get confused or if things get a little weird, Always just go back, what am I being asked? And then answer that question. Okay? All right. Next, I will probably ask something about the facts of the case. Okay? So if you remember back to our lecture many, many weeks ago on the subjects and the reading you did in your book, there's a reason that we care about wounds on the body when it comes to maggots. What is it? Explain that to me. So same idea. You've got all the information. You've got everything. So what is the reason there is no apparent wounds? That means that the maggots are going to be laid at the natural bodily openings. Okay, 
Cool. Pretty straightforward. All right. Another case. I may want to know when the fly eggs were laid. Well, this is pretty easy, isn't it? Right? So mock case again, same exact thing. Body, no apparent wounds. Body was covered in second in star maggots. You identify as Chrysomyosephala. When were the eggs laid? See, notice how different this is slightly different than how old were the maggots. When were those eggs laid? When you ask when, that's when I'm asking for a date. So again, we've got our dates here. You know all the calculations, all that sort of stuff. So I'm just asking when on that calendar do they reach that second in star? So we know they need a minimum of 13.8. So they reach 13.8 accumulated degree days on the 27th. They reach 27.6, our max, on the 26th. So the eggs were laid sometime then between March 26th and March 27th. Give this to me in dates and make sure you have a range. So that's what I'm looking for. When I ask you when, you give dates. When I ask you how old, you give days or hours. Done. All right. Now more. Now, I'm an entomologist, and I want to know your time of colonization estimation then. What is it? Well, we just now figured out when the eggs were laid, right? So this is the same thing, and I'm asking you, what is your time of colonization estimation? A body is colonized as soon as the eggs are laid. Therefore, this answer is exactly the same as the last one. You figured out that the eggs had to have been laid between March 26th and March 27th. Therefore, your time of colonization is March 26th and March 27th. This is literally the, a, a different way of asking that same other question. When were the eggs laid? What is the time of colonization? They're the same question. Answer it the same way way. Got it? Okay. Next question. Imagine I'm a cop. I want to know when this person died. So I have no use for words like time of colonization or degree days or the maggots are this old. What the hell does that mean? Well, we just now figured out when the eggs were laid and we know that when the eggs are laid, that equals the time of colonization. And as long as there was nothing keeping the flies from accessing that body, I know that the time of, it, of colonization can equal the time that the body died. Therefore, the answer is exactly the same as the last one. Notice I'm going to use some very specific wording here. Assuming the person died where she was found, nothing keeping the flies from colonizing the body, when did she die? That answer then, exactly the same. Sometime between March 26th and March 27th. So you see how he made those logical leaps? Yeah, you figure out when that body was colonized and cops are going to keep coming at you. When, when did that die? And you can keep saying time of colonization, 26, 27. But that's what I'm looking for, okay? Assuming that everything, all those assumptions were met, that person died between March 26th and March 27th. All right. Let's try another one, shall we? So what happens when there is more than one maggot species on the body? So you'll notice I'm giving you these questions. They're getting a little bit more complex each time. So what happens when there's, when there's more than one maggot species? You want to use the most developed species. So I've told you this over and over again, right? The largest maggot, the biggest maggot, the oldest maggot. Those are the ones that were likely oviposited on the body first. This is the one that showed up within 15 seconds of death. So this is the one that's going to equal the time of death. And that's the one we're going to use for a time of colonization estimation. So if there's more than one species, just choose the one that is oldest. So let's look at this case. Mock case, you find a body in a field March 27th. Walk it through again. In a field, it was outside. March 27th, we know the date it was found. Check. No apparent wounds are observed on the body, so you're going to be finding those maggots in the natural bodily openings. The body is covered with second instar maggots, which you identify as Chrysomyia roof fossies. Good. So here's our first species. And third instar, instar maggots that you uh, identify as Chrysomyia megacephala. So in this case, what is more developed? Chrysomyia roof fossies or Chrysomyia megacephala? It's megacephala. They're the third instar. You go for the oldest. So you can just ignore Rufa fossies. They showed up a little bit later. They're going to be covered by your time of colonization. Fine. So all you have to do then is just do your exact same calculations for the oldest maggot. 
So in this case, we're asking the question, when did the person die? So we do our same exact thing. We've got our tables for how many degree days for megacephala. We've got our degree days, uh, how many have accumulated in time outside. We know our ranges. This time, we need to figure out when the third instar maggots, when were those oviposited so that we observe them as third instar on the 27th. So here's our third instar. They need somewhere between 27.6 and 55.8 degree days to reach the third instar. So let's see, 27.6 minimum. Nope, didn't reach it on 27th. So bare minimum, they had to be on the 26th, right? That's when they reached that. Then when was the maximum? We're looking for 55.8, 25th, nope, 45, uh, 24th there, 58.5. So those eggs were laid sometime between March 24th and March 26th. If they were laid earlier, you would have seen pre pupae or pupae on the 27th. If they were laid later, you would have seen first or second instar. You wouldn't see this third instar. So see what I'm asking there? I will sometimes throw in some extra insects there. Always go for the oldest one. That's all you need to do. Okay, go for the oldest. Figure out how many degree days are necessarily. Find when that happened in time. You have yourself a time of colonization estimation. Okay, so that's pretty much all the questions I'm going to be asking you. I'm going to be asking you different, uh, this in different ways, in different um, methods. I'll be giving you different scenarios. I just do this so you practice this uh, interpreting the data over and over and over again. All right, so that's all you're doing. Let me know if you have any questions.